Let's take a look. Galbraith is number 86, was the all Pac-10 tight end last year. Trying to run the same pattern he did a little bit earlier. Against the defense. That's an easy call, Keith. I could make that one. <laughs> Burkholder playing with that sore ankle against Galbraith. Uh, not a bad matchup because Eugene's pretty good sized fellas, 200 pounder himself. And a hitter. And the Huskies need him. He's so a, that offsets that holding call against the Trojans. Burkhalter is a nominee for the best defensive back in the in the country. He's a Jim Thorpe nominee. Five uh, defensive backs in the Pac-10 are nominated for that award, including two, Carrier and Coulter, that play for Southern Cal. Well, back we go to first and ten. After that penalty, Jackson. John has it. John goes down at the Washington 48. And that pickup is close to eight yards. This week on ABC's Monday Night Football, Archell, who was just named uh, the head coach of the Los Angeles Raiders, will make his coaching debut as the Raiders meet the New York Jets at 9 Eastern Time Monday here on ABC Sports. You know, I played with uh, Archell, not for the Raiders, but uh, in some Pro Bowl games, some All-Star games, and... Uh, what an outstanding man he is. Always uh, very uh, alert, always thinking what the other guy next to him was doing. I think he's going to be an outstanding head coach. Second down and three for Southern Cal. Six-man front right there for uh, umpire throws the flag, and that probably means too much time. Stand there looking at the ticker. Dead ball, ball start against the offense. Now, Still second down. It's against the Trojans, it could have been because the clock was winding down, but instead somebody lifted up and then settled back, and that got the flag. That's what we'll have for you at halftime. He's involved in the Houston Cougars who've been scoring and running and jumping and piling up miles and miles of yardage. But unless you buy a ticket, you ain't going to see them. They're on probation. Marinovich buying time with a rollout, trying to set up a screen up here for Irvins and uh, doesn't have much of a screen. Irvins just put a good move on uh, Clifford and he just ran around Clifford and almost made a big, big play out of it. They marked the ball at the 47. Inside the 47, it's about a yard on third down. and Irvin's out of the eye. Nope. They try to throw for it. Incomplete. They're going to call it an incomplete forward pass. His arm had moved forward. And the way the rule book reads now, after years and years of arguing and clawing and scratching, they finally have decided that any forward movement of the ball will be considered an incomplete forward pass, and that's what you had here. Here's your man, Fraley. We've just been talking about him. Watch as he blitz through. Everybody's blocking up front, big man on big man, and Fraley, number 39 with the speed, runs by Parkinson, gets a hold of Marinovich. Uh, I don't know, I'm sorry, he wasn't throwing, he brought the ball back down. Let's see it again from this angle. Unless his knee was down before he hit, and you couldn't tell from that angle, but he was not throwing it. He was 11 of 11 prior to that. So they fail on third and short. The snap is high, but Dale gets it away. And a fair catch call by Washington's Joe Mincy. Back around the 16-yard line. The Huskies are leading 7 to nothing at 6.26 to go first half. The Washington Huskies with a 7-0 lead, and they have the ball first down at their own 16-yard line. Tommy Smith blocked a putt, took it in for the touchdown, and that's 
the scoring in the game. That wedge play, that's about all it was. Good for a yard and a half or two. Let's go back and take a look at that play before the punt for Southern Cal as Marinovich is going to take the ball. And 39 at the bottom of your screen, Fraley's going to put all kinds of pressure on him. Now, it's not a pass there. He pulled it down. And he wasn't passing it into the ground, so... But his knee did seem to be down before the ball came out. But the well, spot... was not a fumble, no. Couldn't have been a fumble. No, it was not a fumble, but the spot should have been there and not up at the original line of scrimmage. Second down, call it nine. Conklin wings it to the sidelines, and the intended receiver, Riley, and number nine, Garner, run together, get tangled up, fall in a heap, and no flag. Take a look at the matchup. Riley at the top left and Garner at the right. I think that's a good call. There's uh, good Garner, football. number nine, sees the ball all the way and is playing the ball. And it looked like Riley was running past him. Another field goal by Stanford. Notre Dame's playing three in a row on the road. This is probably the tough one for them right here. They won big at Purdue. Now they come all the way out to Stanford. And next week, they've got to go to the Air Force Academy. And a whistle stops them. Well, they've played eight out of last nine on the road, haven't they? Yep. yep. Still third down. Everybody likes to call that smog. I don't know if it is or not. Those of us who live here call it haze. <laughs> wouldn't have smog, we didn't have so many folks. Conklin won out of the last 10. He's 6 out of 17 so far in the ball game today. Third down and 13. Whips that one in a hurry to Riley, and he tries to pop between uh, two defenders, and he almost did, and he may have just enough. Mark Carrier and Marcus Hopkins, and he was going for the marker, and he's very, very close to get a good first play down. because the corner blitz is another corner blitz. He's just going to come down here and hook, and Conklin is going to find the vacant area where the cornerback blitzes, pulls up, and Riley sees it and turns for the ball. That last little lunge got the first down. And so at 5.20 to go in the first half, Washington leading 7-0 over Southern California. And they have the ball first down just outside the 26. Little pop down the middle to Ames, the tight end. He's gang tackled, but he's got another first down. Ames, good football player. Big senior from Spokane. Ames had knee surgery last year, missed the entire year, was the starter in 1987 at tight end, missed last year, and then came back this year and is an outstanding receiver. In fact, Don James has outstanding uh, depth at that tight end position. No, you know, they're just out of a mold. 6'5", 240, 6'5", 235, 6'5", 235. Yeah, they are. Ball is just short of 39 now, and it is the first down for the Huskies. They have kept the uh, Trojan linebackers pretty quiet so far. That is just over Cleveland Coulter. Pass is caught by Riley, and Riley gets another Washington first down. Boulder almost got a hand on it. Take a look here. Now, you got trips out here. you got three receivers out here to the right. They're just going to go down and run a little curl pattern right here as these guys clear. One of the advantages this week for Washington was that Southern Cal's defense played a similar type of offense last week. Washington State used that same three wide receivers. So Washington had a good idea going into the game exactly what style of defense they were going to be getting against that three wide. Ball is near the Southern California 48. And first down for the Huskies. Conklin back and again has good protection. And it's good. Caught at the USC 34-yard line by Andre Riley. Boy, impressive throw by Conklin. The big 
And the big quarterback, strong arm, Riley's at the top of your screen, number 23, as Spears, number three, is playing the short zone. Let's him go past. Now, the important thing for Riley is to get far enough past Spears, the first man, to give him an angle to throw the ball. Is his feet inbounds with, with possession? Good throw and a good catch. Officials right there. Riley has caught five balls, 89 yards, and all of them have resulted in first down. This is Greg Lewis inside the 25, down to the 23. And a Trojan shaken up. It's Carrier, but Mark gets up. He's a little wobbly, though. I guess he's all right. <laughs> he's looking for somebody to hang on to for a he's minute. He said, hold on to me a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Get my balance back. Uh -huh. He took a pretty good lick. He's one of those All-Americans we talked about on that defense. Three returning All-Americans for Southern Cal on that defensive team. Second down and three for Washington at the Trojan 23. Pressure backside. Conklin gets it away, and it is incomplete, and he just threw that ball away because he knew that Cleveland Coulter was coming. I mean, Coulter really got loose that well, You time. can't turn your back. Watch as he turns his back. Look to the right side of your screen. Number eight is a strong safety. Normally, you account for all of the linemen and linebackers, but a quarterback, you've got to be responsible for the corners and the strong safeties. That time, he shouldn't have turned away from him, and he barely got rid of the ball. You've got to be... Uh, responsible for him if you want to live. That's true. I mean, <laughs> if you don't care about your body, you can do what he just did. That's right. Third down and three. And that won't get it. Trojan stuffed that one back around the 25 as Dan Owens, the big nose guard, playing in nose guard instead of tackle this week, takes down Lewis. So Greg can't do it. And it's going to bring up fourth down. And it's going to bring in not McCallum. Where is McCallum in? Let's see here. Yep, he's in there. This is pretty good size. 41 yards. Conklin does the holding. McCallum gets all of it and hit it down the pipe. And so at 2.32 to play in the first half. The Washington Huskies bidding for a big upset. They've gone to the lead of 10 to nothing. Lead and John McCallum is going to kick it off with Calvin Holmes We're waiting for it. McCallum is a senior from Seattle. Oh, it's up short. And the Trojans pick it off short. And uh, returned by look like it was Louisi that grabbed the ball up front and Southern California now will have some field position with 219 to go in the first half let's pause five seconds so our ABC stations can identify themselves all rest just at the 39 yard line Washington kicking game is not all that solid, is it? The punt block team's pretty good. Yes, it certainly <laughs> is. Morinovich gives it to Irvin. And down goes Ricky as he falls over the 40. Entman, Steve Entman, a redshirt freshman out of Cheney, Washington, 6'4", 275 pounds. Can't tell you who's going to play next week here on ABC Sports. We'll be able to tell you uh, sometime Monday morning, maybe even Sunday. But it'll be Big Ten, Pac-10, and it'll start live at 3.30 Eastern time. And the Trojans now bidding to get on the scoreboard themselves in the closing seconds of the first half. Produce a big play with Joel Scott taking it down near the Washington 36. Well, they're lined up at a quick uh, huddle, no huddle offense, but uh, Scott makes a nice move. It's downfield. This is very similar to what they moved the ball on last week against Washington State. A hurry-up offense. Out of the shotgun, Marinovich shoots another one, and he's got Wellman. Wellman drops the ball, picks it up, keeps going. 
That's legal. Didn't step out of bounds. It's first down Trojans. Husky 15-yard line. Interesting in talking to Lilo Lang. When I brought up uh, Gary Wellman's name to Lilo, the cornerback, and he said, yeah, he's fast. <laughs> he's a, the fastest on the team. Runs a 4 3 5 40. Washington now rattled by those two big plays. They have called the timeout. And it's strange how SC goes in their normal offense the entire first half and, and can't get anything done. Now they go to a hurry up offense and things start happening just like they did last week. Take a look at the tail end of this play. Can't see if his foot was out of bounds no. when he picked it up or not. It was. I was that it was in. I was watching him with the glasses and he did not step out. Great effort to stay in. He got his foot back in when he touched, picked up the ball. Do you realize how hard it is to take that much time to lean down and pick up? Oh a yeah, you got to believe you're going to get hit, right? Oh me! <laughs> <laughs> you have to have courage to lean down and pick that thing up because you're just you're just expecting to get crunched any second. All right, the ball is at the 15, and it has become the Todd Marinovich show again. The Southern California rushing game. 17 carries, only 33 yards. That's less than two yards per carry on the average. And they came in leading the Pac-10 in rushing. And they've not been able to run the ball today. Out of the shotgun. Marinovich throwing it. Comes in. Touchdown. John Jackson. five men out of the pattern so the protection is minimal Jackson is here he's just going to go into the end zone and curl the defensive man will be right there with him everybody's out of the pattern everybody's locked into a man Jackson goes stops that's just poor coverage Mincy just got lost it's just poor coverage you don't yep. have to follow him when they get to the end zone let him keep going because you don't have to protect against the back of the end zone that's poor coverage Kick by Rodriguez is good. And so Southern California just all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. Down the field they go. Maybe Larry ought to make them play two-minute offense all the time. I think they saw the side of their own blood and they were scared. The big so far. Oh, is it O.J. Simpson used to have a phrase, though, the old credo, particularly when John McKay was here. First quarter, uh, student body right was worth about two, two and a half. Second quarter, Four, four and a half. Third quarter, seven. Seven and a half in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Touchdown. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at the pass protection, as we mentioned. That's Schultz, 76. Barnes, 68. Holding on, I might add, to uh, Brown. Great protection. And Marinovich has been on target all day long. You know, in the last 26 years, Southern Cal offensive line has produced 23 All-Americans. And during that time, they produced four Heisman Trophy running backs also. Well, we have the bad news about Marvin Pollard. He's headed for the surgeon tomorrow morning. Yeah, that had to be, unfortunately. That's a low line drive kick that's taken by Bino Bryant. Bryant looking for some daylight. Find some. All the way back across the 45. This young man, Bino Bryant, a true freshman, playing with a heavy heart today. Is he's from this area, and one of his high school teammates died in a, during a ball game last night. Had a heart attack. Wasn't sure whether Bryant was even going to play today. Makes an outstanding return. Young Kevin Copeland collapsed on the sidelines last night after carrying the ball. First down. Washington at their 46. That is far and away the Huskies' best starting position of the entire day. Conklin's pass is incomplete. He had two men over there, and Mario Bailey, a sophomore from Seattle, went up looking into the sun and couldn't catch it. 
minute and 16 to go in the first half. It's now 10 to 7, Washington. You got Bailey and Riley on the same side again. Top of the picture. Pressure. Conklin throws it away. Randy Horde, number 66, and Conklin just let it go into the cheap seats. Pressure's going to come from our right side as Owens, number 90, is double teamed in the middle. That's Horde, 66, is going to get there and force Conklin to throw. The story that you don't see is there was two offensive linemen blocking outside on Junior Seau, which really freed up Horde to put pressure on Conklin. Horde's like the fourth man they're worried about in that defensive line, although he did a nice job there. Third down and 10 for the Huskies. They've got Seau blocked out of there, and now he's loose, and so is Conklin running for his life, and down he goes around the 49, and that's fourth down. This is a classic double team right here. Well, there's Seau at the bottom of your screen, 55. Double team, lineman and Lewis, the running back, flushed out of the pocket. The Southern Cal defense came into the game with 28 sacks in four ball games. That's an average of seven a game. Put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Southern California has called the timeout. They have one remaining, 49 seconds. Washington looking at fourth down and seven. They've got to punt it. And the Huskies want to get that ball back. Tonight, Bob Euchre hits the road and runs into some tough truckers on an all-new Mr. Belvedere, followed by Living Dolls, and then Peter Falk as Columbo on ABC Saturday Mystery. So you got a lot going on Saturday night here on ABC. Columbo. Peter Falk may have tired at times of that role, but it's a role that he will never oh, I love escape. It. I love it. And it's marvelous. It really yeah, is. It, it goes with him everywhere. Yep. The Washington punting, Channing Wiles, 34, 34, 23, 36. So you don't figure he's going to knock it too deep. Larry Wallace, on the other hand, has dropped back to his own 10. So he may be... It depends on the kind of kick. If it's a hanger, fine, you can come get it. If it's a low line drive away from you, he'll have trouble getting to it. It's a hanger. Back at the eight. Looks for the sideline, dies to the 20, and there the Trojans will have it in 39 seconds to work with. 44-yard punt, far and away Wild's best one of the day, and a 12-yard return by Wallace. Trojans have one timeout now to work with, too. One timeout in 39 seconds. Huskies are leading 10 to 7. That field goal by McCallum, the difference now. That career record of Smith against Washington includes his time at Arizona. They run it. Leroy Holt got a first down too. Big Leroy pounds across the 30 and hits the chalk to stop the clock in 34 seconds. With all the talk about the tailbacks and Marinovich and everybody else, the defense for Southern Cal, that man is probably one of the most underrated fullbacks in the country. Yep. I'll bet you he shows up in the NFL somewhere and, and becomes. That's pretty well known. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Marinovich passed to the sidelines. They get it out of bounds. A pass caught by John Jackson. John is closing down now on Eric Affolter's career reception record. Gets very close to it. He's caught four today for 34 yards. Well, he needs one more to break one the more. record. Yep. yep, that ties it. He did five to break it.
Second down, long two. Husky bluff. Trojan reacted. So what do you have? Neutral zone against the Huskies or movement for the Trojans? Against the offense, almost always goes that way because the defensive man is entitled to move around. 27 seconds remaining. We have official confirmation that uh, Marvin Pollard, torn ligament, left knee, on his way to Pasadena, will have surgery, probably will have surgery in the morning. Holt carries again and gets up to the 40, and uh, they're disdaining the pass in this particular uh, possession. And time is running away. Heading for 10 seconds, they're trying to get the ball off one more time. They've got a timeout. They've got to move it downfield to have any hope of the Huskies by a score of 10 to 7. We'll have the ball to start the second half of play. John McCallum, number three, kicks it. Calvin Holmes, number 21, is the deep man in the middle, and he won't have the ball. It'll be handled instead by Ricky Irvins, the tailback. And Irvins comes back to the 19-yard line, and he is clobbered at that point. And we switch to Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, despite that touchdown pass to John Jackson, Washington Huskies very encouraged by their first-half defensive performance. They gave up seven yards of play last week against Colorado. Defensive coordinator Jim Lambright said we were sitting and catching. I want you to start attacking. That's what they've done today, and that's what they preached again at halftime. I would think at halftime that the Huskies ought to feel like that they were more than just leading by three. But we'll see. Here come the Trojans, who proved their mettle last week up at Coleman. This is Ricky Irvin blowing up the middle. And he gets it up to near the 27-yard line. One of the things that this Husky defense, uh, as you take a look at the uh, offensive leaders, first half, Marinovich, 16 out of 17. Outstanding first half. Irvin's with 10 rushing yards, 10 rushes for nine yards. Jackson leading the receivers. Call it second down and two. The battle right now is for possession of the trenches. You don't win normally unless you control that piece of real estate. And that's where the fight's going on right now. Marinovich throws down the middle, pass good, tight end. Scott Gulbert holds it down up at the 36, and it's a first down for the Trojans, and he caught it despite pretty good coverage by James Clifford. Garbrus is number 86. That's a slow block. He acts like he's going to block first. The linebackers drop. Maybe forget about him a little bit. Clifford can't make the play, but does make the tackle. Well, the Trojans moving now from their 19. Marinovich hands to Irvin. Irvin just caught, dropped by Dennis Brown, number 79. The big defensive tackle. That's his second solo of the day. An incredible score coming out of the Southeastern Conference. Mississippi jumped out to a 21-0 lead over Alabama. Okay, that's fine. Alabama has now scored 62 unanswered <laughs> points. Woke them up. Aaron Emanuel is in the backfield now for Southern California. The one back set for the Trojans. Marinovich still has it. Pressures after him. And down he goes. Back at the 30. Number 58, Travis Richardson. Was the man that started the pursuit. Nice close-up look. Play action fake. Richardson is not fooled. He is a small defensive lineman. He is not big. He's only 6'4 and 245. But he was voted the best defensive lineman on that Husky defensive line last year. And remember that Dennis Brown is also on that line. So Richardson really playing well last year. Third down and 15. That play sort of took some of the steam out of the Trojans. That pass is thrown out of bounds, incomplete, and they'll have to punt. And once again, Morinovich was getting some heat. Martin Harrison, an outside backer, was in his face. 
it's not always important to get to the quarterback and sack him. Maybe it's just as important to get there and hurry him and make him know that you're in the area. And so their first possession stops at their own 31-yard line. Ron Dale is in the punt. Charles Mincy goes deep for Washington. Pressure coming. They get it out. Good kick. Mincy circles and takes it to 26. And gets back near the 35. But there was a Husky putting the heat on. Number 59, Virgil Jones, it looked like, on the punt. What makes a machine more user-friendly? It should be designed well, with controls that are easy to find. It should be dependable and powerful. And it helps if it's a hundred. So let's see what happens in this series now. Is Owen still at nose guard? Let me look here and see if he's over the top of Rostad. Yes, he is. That might be worth some conversation. That's a move that was made for this ball game, putting Owens over Brostek at center and effectively moving from tackle to the middle guard. He comes up the middle, but so far Owens has not been a factor at all today on Conklin as he completes that pass to Mario Bailey. Don James decided to change his offense a little bit this year. Went to the one back. People said he was a little conservative. He's a quarterback. Uh, He's just going to do whatever works. He's in excellent condition. He's an avid runner, has run in a marathon, once climbed Mount Rainier. He's looking for some volunteers. He says he's looking for his assistants to go with him. That's Lewis trying to find something up the middle, and uh, there is nothing there, as this time it's Ryan and Owens. And they just shut the door. There's the offensive leaders. Washington Conklin only 10 of 24. Riley, the leading receiver. You talk. You know my climbing mind right now. Jimmy Lambright's not going to have it because Jimmy's a local guy. He grew up around there, played at Washington, has been there forever. Jimmy's too smart to be running up down that mountain. He's you know? smart enough though to recruit in Hawaii. That's his area. <laughs> <laughs> local guys are going to be running up down that mountain. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's a pretty good hike, folks. And they stop him here. Well, this is a new offense. That's what it'll do to you. Notre Dame has now taken the lead over Stanford. But uh, they fiddled around, fiddled around, trying to get everybody in place, trying to get the play call, trying to get it in, trying to get it all of that. And uh, finally, by the time once they it's in up, place, it's a simpler offense sure. because they go strong side and weak side with their offensive linemen. They have fewer plays. The pressure goes on the quarterback. He's got to make all the right adjustments. They had trips at the top of the picture, throw it underneath, intended for Lewis, and it's intercepted by Carrier on the ricochet. It was a bad pass. It was thrown behind the receiver, and Carrier comes up with it. Now, I don't know if somebody tipped it. I couldn't see that, but. I know what's going behind the man. There's Owens getting a little piece. It was tipped, and Carrier seemed to get his hands underneath the ball. Whether or not it hit the ground, and I can tell, but the official was right there, and a big turnover for Southern Cal. That's so now the defense has given the offense field position. The defense creates the momentum in the football. Uh, games and that's uh, exactly what Carrier has done. That's his third interception of the year. Irvin's the tailback. He's got it. And he's got about eight yards running over the left side. Running behind Parkinson and Harlow. Remember Pat Harlow? We talked about Pat Harlow and uh, he had all kinds of trouble in making the adjustment in the opening game. And uh, now watch, look through here and see if you can see 77 as Wervins goes through the hole. They pull, that's the off tackle, that's Schultz. 
Harlow and Parkinson had already made their blocks. It's amazing how big some of these offensive linemen are and can still pull and get around ahead of a smaller 5'8", for instance, uh, running back. Remember how much trouble how Harlow had during the Illinois game, the first game of the season, playing that uh, weak side position. And now you don't call his number because he's, he's you don't right. see it. He disappeared and he's doing his job. That's right. So he's learned how since last time we saw it. Still has that defensive mentality, though. <laughs> Still hangs around with the defensive line. <laughs> But he's doing his job now. All right, it's second down and a long two for the Trojans. Marinovich finally throws to the sidelines, and we get a penalty flag thrown here, so hang on. Galbraith was over there. Referees Larry Thompson. He got trouble with <laughs> this microphone, too. We have illegal touching by the offense. Voluntarily went out of bounds, was the first to come back in, touch the pass, lost the right to repeat the down. Third down. That's the hard part of it, loss of down. Can't go out and come back unless you're knocked out. If you're jammed out and you come right back in, it's okay. But you just can't go out on your own, run behind a couple of your players, sneak through there, and come out about 10 yards further downfield. Ten minutes to go in the third quarter in Washington, holding on to a 10-7 lead. The Trojan offense, while Marinovich has had a big day, it has been a very quiet day for the running. And so as a result, the offense hasn't been terribly productive. Let's it go down the sideline and overthrows Jackson. But there was pretty good coverage by Lang. Lilo was right there with him, and had the ball been thrown where Jackson could have caught it, Lang could have defended it. They had the ideal play on against the blitz, an inside blitz. He got outside protection. Plenty of time for Jackson to go upfield. And it was pretty good coverage. So the Trojans will have to punt it away. And in comes Ron Dale with Mark Preston. Now, Brock Preston is in there to do the punting now. They're going to change it. Mincy is the deep man right there, number one. So Preston gets it away and a mile high. Ooh, it's a good looking kick. Gets right on the goal line. Well, that's bad luck for Preston because if the punt is six inches shorter, they've probably got it down, down around the two or three yard line. But it will come back to the 20. Defense gave the offense field position, couldn't do anything with it. Now the Huskers will send out same alignment. McKay, number four, Riley, number 23. Ames is the tight end. Riley comes to the bottom of your picture. Conklin hands to Greg Lewis, and Lewis never did get started. Junior Seah makes the tackle, and here's Roger Cuevo. Thank you very much, Keith. They're breathing a sigh of relief in Champaign. Jeff George, who went out of the game in the first half with the knee injuries back in, hands off to Howard Griffith. He goes five yards for a touchdown, his second score of the day. And Illinois leads Ohio State 17-7. Back to Keith Jackson. Ooh, things are not going well for the Buckeyes. The loss is back inside the 15-yard line. They stay with the running game. This time, Lewis pops out of there and gets up to the 22, where he is rolled down by Ernest Spears. Let's go inside. Brostick, the center, is number 60. He's blocking on Owens, number 90. Well, he's getting a little help from his friend Kirk, number 51. Now, the defensive man just wants to hold his ground, spun, and didn't get a piece of the running back. But they're double-teaming in the center. That's why you haven't heard a lot of calls for... Owens. Third down and eight. <laughs> Pressure coming. Pass away. Pass no good. Intended for number 89, the tight end. 
But Conklin took a lick. I mean to tell you that Seau and Williams unloaded on him. Well, Conklin is a big old country boy. He's kind of laid back, likes to hunt and fish. Just barely gets that one off. And Seau, 55. Williams was right there also. Yeah, Williams didn't hit him. I thought uh, Tex got a piece too, but he didn't. He pulled away. Well, that's Larry Wallace waiting now. Once again, the defense is going to give the offense good field position for Southern Cal. Wilds hits it high, gets it to turn over. That's his best kick of the ball game. And fair catch is called back at the 38-yard line. That's a 40-yarder, but there is no return at 8.22 to go in the third quarter. For every man who wears Brute, there's a woman who loves what he smells like because there's something about Brute that's nice to be close to. Honey, I was just thinking about you. Brute, it smells like a man. You know, a lot of people like to talk while they drive. Well, let me give you a tip. It's a lot easier with a unit and cellular phone. And you have to travel the straight and narrow. 8.22, as we noted to go, and see just a brief glimmer of the Hollywood Hills in the background. First down for Southern California. Ball just outside their 38, and they trail 10 to 7. Marinovich gives it to Ricky Irvins. Irvins gets away from some pressure, but then very quickly coming up to make a hit is William Doctor. William Doctor wears number 10 on defense for Washington. He's a sophomore from uh, El Paso, California. El Paso. It shows you where Marinovich is throwing the ball. Eight to his wide receivers, four to his tight ends, and five to his running backs. That's a pretty good distribution. Second down and nine, the pass is across the field and complete to Gary Wellman. First catch of the day for Gary, and it's over midfield and a first down for the Trojans. Give you an idea how strong the kid's arm is. Take a look at the pass protection, a little game inside. Trojans pick it up very nicely. Wellman catches it in his hands and then turns up field for a few more yards. Just over midfield on the first down. 373. Oh, 373. Go. Shotgun. Renovich throws it away. You don't have the grasp rule in college. That was Steve Empman, a big freshman from Cheney, who brought him down. No grasp and control rule, but is there a receiver in the area? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Brown, 79, not getting anything done. But Epman, number 90, I don't think there was anybody around. You couldn't tell from there, but watching with the naked eye from up here, I think he got away with one. Yeah, I would say the ball hit the ground about 12 yards. <laughs> <laughs> Second and 10. Option, good pitch. Ricky Irvins takes it inside the 40. Lang finally made the tackle. But here's the key to the play right here. Take a look at the blocking in the offensive line. Garbreth is 86. About 79 there. It looks like a takedown. A left hand with a hold on the <laughs> shoulder pads. Looks like Schultz, number 76. But a good play by Marinovich. Ducks inside one man and then flipped it back to Irvins. It's the best running play for Irvins on the day. For anybody wearing... Uh, Cardinal and gold. Again out of the shotgun, tries to hand it off, and the ball is dropped and covered for the Trojans at about the 38-yard line by Hope, the fullback. So sloppy ball handling there. This is one of the new things that John Matsko, the offensive coordinator, Ray Dorr, just just didn't have hold of it, Marinovich, and didn't get it into the pocket. 
No, that was poor by Marinovich. He didn't yeah. got to put it under his arm. And he was rushed. You can tell yeah. he was rushed. It was just, it's a new play that's been put in. And uh, a running play from a shotgun uh, formation. So it is second down from the 38. And he 12 yards. Staying with the shotgun. Jackson got it. He caught it at the nine. Great catch by John, and that's a new receiving record for Southern California wideout. 124 breaks the record held by Eric Affolzer. And when you break a career receiving record, you want to do it on one like this. You don't want a little quick out. Take a look at the pass protection. Brown, 79, not going anywhere. This is an excellent throw over one defender and in front of the other. And that's a great catch. Coverage wasn't bad. You can't call Lilo for that when he was there, but it was just a great, just a great pitch. And that's John Sr., who used to coach at Southern California. Keep your feet on the ground now, John. Just hold on. <laughs> great kid. A great kid. He's a graduate student. Down to the two-yard line goes Irving. It'll be second down and goal, Southern California. Now USC starting to show some bounce in their offense. Aaron Emanuel comes into the game now as Irvins and Jackson go out. So they put the big back in. As much as Leroy's been button heads with all those big people today, they ought to let him stick one in there. Here's his chance. They give it to him, and he gets down to about the one. I tell you, that Washington bunch is tough when you try to take them on head up, aren't they? Well, you got to give them credit. They came in. Ninth in the Pac-10 against the run. SC offense was first in the league rushing the football, and they have stopped them. I'm not cold, but they stopped them pretty well here in the uh, first three quarters of this ball game. It is third and goal. That's Brown, John Cook, Travis Richardson, the down people. Empton, they've added him in there in goal line. And he threw it too high. And it's fourth down. If they have to settle for three here, Washington's got to figure it one this round. We right? saw Marinovich going with his right hand. He was pumping it in the ground a couple of times. He wanted to go for it. Go for it. Top right of your screen. Number 86 is Galbraith. He's got him. He's yeah, available. It's just a poor throw. He just throws it too far. If anything, you should have thrown it more to the outside. Let him run away from the defense. Larry Smith wants to think about it. He calls timeout now. They've got the offensive unit on the field to go for the touchdown. But I, uh, somebody upstairs maybe said, hey, coach. <laughs> and that inner self may be saying to Larry, mm, I need to talk about this because you've got a great opportunity to put three up. Well, last week at Washington State, as time was running out, four seconds to go, he didn't hesitate. They were down 17 to 16, four seconds to play. No question he was going for the two points, and it worked. This is a little bit different situation, but it was interesting in talking with Don James about that uh, last night. He said, you know, if you uh, had a clinic and all the coaches from around the NCAA were there, and you ask him to write what they would have done on the road in a Pac-10 game early in the year, most of it would have gone from the tie. They're not going to. They're going to go for the touchdown. Do you want to spend your miracle so early in the season? Oh, I don't think this is such a big gamble. If you don't make it, you leave. You leave Washington on their own one-yard line. You've got perhaps one of the best. You do have one of the best, maybe one of the five best defenses in the country. You kind of figure that you're going to get the ball back by holding him if you don't make it here. But you're going to jack up the Washington defense if they hold you here. And they're going to be hiring a kite. Irvins is in the backfield now Over. as they go back to the I formation. Over the top. Marinovich keeps it and scores. So 
So all of that speculation and noise coming out of Jackson and Greasy, fluttering the air amounts to nothing as they go for it and stick it in the end zone. And it's an option. Brunovich not crazy about the option, but he'll do it for seven points. Good blocking up front. And he goes down the line and gets in for the score. Jackson will hold. Rodriguez. Good Rodriguez. Jackson holds it. Fryer snapped it. And everything worked. And for the first time today, the Southern California Trojans have the lead at 4.41 to go in the third quarter. I really realized for the first time that a bookstore could make a lot of money. There are two places. One was Notre Dame and the other was Penn State. Yeah. I mean, they are, they're, first off, they're terrific. Secondly, they have tremendous business. High, high hanging kick, and it's taken by Beano Bryant coming across the field, and he runs out of room. Here's Mike. Well, John Jackson Jr. with the school uh, receiving record and John Jackson Sr. appropriately having displaying the emotions of a proud father. Well, uh, Mike, it's an exciting moment for us, uh, particularly when we get the touchdown, right? He's quite a young man. We just talk about his athletic excellence, but he's a great student working on his MBA now. You've got to be proud about that as well. Really, we really are, Mike. Uh, John has done an outstanding job of of setting his priorities correctly and we're very proud of it. Thanks for coming down and join us and enjoy JJ's moment. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, sir. JJ Sr., good guy. He was a fine coach here before he went into the television business. As a matter of fact, back on the 14-yard line, Ernest Spears gets all over Greg Lewis and it's the Trojan defense now that is on fire. They're trying to give the offense the ball again and again in good field position because the offense finally cashed it in and maybe the defensive guys are thinking now hey if we can get it to them maybe they'll let us rest five minutes <laughs> ball back inside the 14 four minutes to go in the third quarter second down and long Conklin with that strong arm and Ames can't pull it in Ames being covered by Michael Williams and so it is third down now and 14. Tex Williams is an outstanding linebacker in his own right, but with guys like uh, Seau and Owens and Ryan and Ross on this team, it's, uh, it's hard to get uh, any publicity. Nice, quiet young man, does his job very well. Crowd gets into it. That end of the field. Pressure coming. Conklin's pass is away. Thrown into a crowd. Incomplete intended for McKay. The better choice there would have been Riley. Riley goes for a touchdown, but he couldn't get it to him. The other linebacker opposite Tex Williams is Seau, number 55. Always putting pressure, always right there to let the quarterback know, hey, you did not have much more time. Should get good field position out of this. Larry Wallace is deep, and that's Wild standing back at his goal line. Should hit it around the three. They're going to be around midfield with it as it bounces and rolls around dead at the Washington 48-yard line. 34-yard punt, so he's pretty much on his average. The Scholar Athlete of the Week brought to you by American Honda, supporting amateur athletics. This week's award goes to Scott Bunnell, sophomore place kicker, Indiana University. Last week, an IU's win over Toledo. He had three extra points, three field goals. One of them, his career-long 43-yarder. So, Honda will present a check for $2,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of Indiana University. For Bunnell, major is business. Great point. 3 1 1. First step Trojans, Washington 48, and a whistle. Dead ball. Both start against the offense. Still first down. At 3.37 to go, third quarter. Been a hard grinder of a ball game. Tough 
Sometimes concentration will break on you a little when you get tired. Take a look at the right side there. It looks like Harlow, number 77, that moved just a little bit. SC has a lot of penalties this year. In fact, they're ninth in the Pac-10 with most penalties. On first and 15, Ricky Irvins. And Irvins is back down to about the Washington 47. Third down, uh, second down and nine coming up. And here's Roger Twyman. 